You hear Christians say it all the time. When you join us for worship here at Trinity Lutheran Church, we will say it many times. What does the word amen mean? A lot of people probably think that amen just means I'm done praying now. I've finished my prayer, the end, amen. Maybe you've been to a church where people say out loud, out of habit, amen, every time they hear the preacher say something they agree with. What exactly does the word mean? Well, we see this word amen all over the Bible, in the Hebrew of the Old Testament and the Greek of the New Testament. The first place that we catch it is in Deuteronomy chapter 27, where Moses, the leader of the Israelites, is passing down his leadership to a new generation of leaders for the Israelites. And he says, you guys, you leaders of Israel, you're going to tell Israel a bunch of things that they shouldn't do. You shouldn't uh, make and worship false idols. You shouldn't withhold justice from widows and orphans. And every time, he says, every time you share with them a command that they shouldn't do, let Israel say amen. That will be Israel's way of saying, yes, we heard you. We understand that this is not what we are supposed to do. So a little bit of amen includes like, I heard you. I, I understand what you're saying. But then also fast forward in Israel's history in the Old Testament where David, good King David, he's singing the song of praise to God and his song finishes like this. He says, blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. And then all the people said, amen. And they praised the Lord. So David was singing this beautiful song, this hymn, we might say, of worship to God. And then all of Israel was sitting there listening and they said, Amen. You know what? That's my song too. Uh, God, look at it as if I had sung that as well. It's kind of like if you imagine a preacher, uh, when, while he's talking, uh, a document is appearing and you see his words come up on the document. And at the end is his signature. Saying amen to what that preacher is saying is like signing your John Hancock at the end of that document as well. You're saying what you just said is what I want to say too. I sign, I, I, I bind myself to saying uh, or singing what you just said as well. So when we say amen together in worship service, we're, we're joining our words uh, and saying that the prayer that was just prayed or the hymn that was just sung, that's my song too. That's my prayer too. I agree with what was said. Because the word amen is related to a different word in Hebrew that sounds the same that means reliable, trustworthy, true. If you call something amen, it is reliable, it is trustworthy, it is true. And where this really comes to a head is in the book of Revelation, the, all the way at the other end of the Bible, where Jesus is called the amen in Revelation 3 verse 14. Jesus is reliable. Jesus is trustworthy. Jesus is true. He is the Amen. And this is such good news for anyone who is going through a tough time right now. Is that you? Are you suffering? Are you wondering what God's will is for you in your life? Are you struggling uh, uh, with yourself? Are you, are you struggling with what you're seeing out in the world? Well, right now during the season of Lent, we are walking with Jesus. We are reading in our services the lessons that follow Jesus up to the cross when he gave up his life. We're looking forward to Easter when we celebrate uh, Jesus' resurrection and uh, from the grave. Jesus is God's final word. He is the trustworthy word. He is the reliable word, the message of God's love in, in human form to us. And that message is... God forgives you. Because Jesus went to the cross as we're following him to during Lent, you know that you are forgiven. It is done. Amen. You know that God is reliable in his commitment to you. Jesus was reliable and trustworthy in his mission to save you from your sins. And that means that all the promises that, he, that God makes, they are amen in Christ. They are trustworthy. They are reliable. They are true. When you come across a promise of God, you can take that as yours. Amen in Jesus Christ. We would love for you to join us in worship during this Lenten season on Sundays at 10.15 a.m. or on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. As, as we join together, join our voices and our amens as we uh, learn more about God's grace. But one final thought I would like to leave with you today 
When the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, was written, a lot of people were suffering. A lot of disturbing things were happening to Christians. A lot of very troubling things. And so I would like to share the final words of Revelation, the final words of the Bible for you in your troubles, in your sufferings, and in, in what you are going through. You see, because of Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection from the grave, through faith in him, he promises that not all sufferings will last forever, not all troubles last forever. There's going to come a day where Jesus comes back and through faith in him, he's going to take you into heaven to be with him. So this is how the book ends. It says, Jesus says, I, yes, I am coming soon. And we say, amen. Come, Lord Jesus. And the grace of the Lord be with God's people. Amen.